Hidden Star, a novel by South African novelist and poet Silo Deger, was translated by award-winning translator Dr. Olisa Guzula, who specializes in multilingual education. In the book, Matome, a young boy during apartheid lives in a township outside of Cape Town. She has written several books for kids, including the most recent Impokoto series, Women Who Have Shaped Us and have translated numerous children's books from English into Istosa. Dr. Olisa uh, joins us now on Zoom to tell us more about her latest project. Dr. Very good morning to you. Such an honor to have you on the program. I mean, speak to us about the inspiration to translate and how do you, you know, the books you translate translate into East Coast. Uh, good morning, listeners. Good morning, Lebu. Um, my inspiration for translating to East Coast is that I, have, I, I, I was trained as a teacher. And then after being trained as a teacher, then I had to work as a teacher trainer. And I was trying to get teachers in schools to, to do reading for enjoyment uh, with children because I felt at the time and at my workplace we all felt that the missing ingredient in the curriculum was the reading of, the lit of literature for children in schools because schools were focused more on grammar, teaching the grammar aspects but not really getting children excited about stories. So, but then it was around 2002 that there was very little children's literature in Isikosa and some of those that were translated had mistakes in them. So I remember us using to um, retranslate the books and then paste over the written text, the new translation, because we felt like this was not capturing what was supposed to be. And then from then on, because I wanted to make sure that children had books, I then worked more on translation. Um, you will realize that if you go to any bookshop, if you are looking for African language books, you find very few of them, um, even today. And this has been a very difficult thing for schools because we are testing children to, to read for meaning, but we are not providing them with literature to read so that they can be able to engage with them and read them with meaning. So mm -hmm. my inspiration was that um, at the time I, wasn't, I didn't see myself as a writer. I saw myself as a teacher trainer. And so I was like, how can I make literature available for children immediately? Mm -hmm. And, and of, of course, publishers were refusing to publish in African languages because they said they don't sell. So it was easier then to work with the books that they suggested. Yeah, um, that that were already published in English to then publish in the Kosa, and that made a big move. And because the publishing process takes very long, um, so translation was even quicker than writing an original book. Although mm -hmm. now I do write for children as well. Yeah, and I mean, I imagine um, the decision to go and translate a book such as you know, um, a Hidden Star by Cabello Silodeker. Speak to us about that decision to go in that way because he's one of the greatest uh, writers we've had in this country and his work is so in-depth and then translating that in his closer. Well, uh, the decision, I, I, I didn't make the decision mm. actually, uh, but um, my colleague, um, previous colleague from our, our previous work where we published many books for children and we had a little hands trust for making books for the little hands, yeah. uh, children. Um, so she approached me and said, hey, there's this book that I've read by Silo Deika, um, The Hidden Star. And I'm like, I don't know that one. I know, uh, you know, The Quiet Violent, Violence of Dreams. I know 13 Cents, but I don't know this one that you're talking about. And mm. she said, no, it's very good for children. And it's a novel. And so because I have translated now about three novels that are big for children, I then thought, okay, it would be uh, the best one to translate this one because it's more South African. Because I had translated Astrid Lindgren's book, um, Brothers Lionheart. She's mm. Swedish, um, a, a, a children's laureate in Sweden. Translated that one. And then I, I had translated um, uh, Stephen Hawking and Lucy Hawking's book, George's Secret Key to the Universe, mm. which is more scientific for children. And then I thought this one would be perfect because this is a South African author and um, it's a big novel for children and it's almost not um, imagined that uh, black South African children from grade four onwards will be able to read a thick novel because they are always, um, that, that group is forgotten from the intermediate phase. A lot of big books that have been produced are books for younger children from maybe babies now mm. to, to, to grade three but nothing for grade fours to grade seven. 
And, and this is where we need box the most because this is where they also get tested mm. for these PELS tests and they need to read more at that age group so that they can be able to take the test as well, mm -hmm. but also more so for, for, for enjoyment. Yeah, and that role though of translation and promoting cultural exchange and intercultural understanding, tell us a little bit about that and how your work phases into that. Yes, um, I work in multilingual education, mm. so um, uh, intercultural communication is important in my work, multiculturalism is important in my work, multilingualism is important in my work, so that as a, as a way for building a nation. Um, I know many people have always thought that you can build a nation by institution instituting one language, which is English, uh, but you, I don't think we, we are united in English because um, there are many people who have no access to English, but the only way to, to, to unite is to have common knowledge that is in different languages. So if a book written by Silo Deka in English can be available to cross speakers or to Sutu speakers, then that's one way to get to know each other. So imagine translating a, a, a book written by um, um, a Sisutu speaker or a Chivenda speaker, that book being read by a closer speaker, mm. this, is, this is one way to promote intercultural communication. So yes, that's, that's exactly that. And yeah. so it, it provides a window, uh, translation provides a window into other cultures and to understanding them. And speak to us about striking that balance, you know, fidelity to the original text with the need to make the translation accessible you know, and engaging for the readers, you know, in the target language. We always discuss these issues because um, you cannot translate um, uh, literally mm. um, uh, from one language to another, but you have to find um, equivalence in your language when you are translating. You also have to version the book so that it sounds like you would say things in your language, not the way you would say things in English. But it was so lovely translating Silo Deka because um, he, she, he's an African, he was mm. a uh, South African. So translating a black person is better than translating um, a, a white person writing in English. A black person writing in English is, um, you can actually hear that what he's trying to say already. It's almost like it's in his closer already, you know. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it is not so difficult to transfer. For example, in his book, I could tell when the old woman is going to appear because I could remember the stories that I was told as a child. Uh, about by my grandmother um, that uh, you know there was always an old lady who had sores who would say yeah. oh my child my child lick my wounds yeah. and then <laughs> she, she turns into a beautiful lady mm. um, and so I could predict while reading his book that this is an African folklore that is coming up so there were no issues therefore with translation because I already understood what that was going to be about and I mean also bringing Unolike into the story as well. I mean, she's 11 years old. And I imagine also trying to, because the, you know, the translation is targeted at these, they will relate better to the story. Yes, um, it's, it's, she's an 11 year old and uh, she is also friends with Becky, who is also an 11 year old. And then they meet up with one of the, um, uh, you know, the, these bullies. Yes. Um, and then four, four, four glasses is, is, is one of the bullies, but then uh, becomes transformed into a good boy when he meets them and, and is being rejected by his team, his group, and he joins them. So the three of them um, are, are young children that children in general will relate to because they are same age group, um, probably grade five, you know, children, and they will be like doing grade five, grade four, grade five, grade six. And so because of that age group, I think uh, the characters being that young, yeah. the children will also relate very easily. All right. Olisa, thank you so much for talking to us. Congratulations on the book, uh, talking to us about Inkwekwezi uh, Elishakileyo, a translation about Skabelo Sillo Deker's Hidden Stop.